Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is life as great adventure. And what, what might shift for us if we were to allow ourselves to be present to the unfolding that of experience that life provides as an adventure that nurtures us and nourishes us in the emergence of our fullest expression. What would that be? How would life be different? So that's what we get to talk about today. But before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells and your molecules and your electrons and creating a brilliant, brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and rub your palms against each other, rub your fingers against your palms, feel the sensation, allow yourselves to be present to the tickling, the tingling, the, the temperature, the pressure, and as you release your hands, allow yourselves to feel the energy moving and allow all these sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to be here with you. Welcome, Rosalind. Good morning, good morning. Um, and welcome to everybody else who's joining us. So today, we're talking about life as great adventure. And... Um, when we think about the hero's journey or the shiro's journey, um, we know that there are all kinds of perils and pitfalls that that our hero or heroine encounter in their in their journey, and um, triumphs and tragedies, and and um, challenges and all of this is part of the, the story that becomes an epic. And we are in our lives, we're in our own adventure, we're in our own great story. Good morning, good morning, Bernadette. Welcome, welcome. And in fact, I have a friend who is um, creating a workshop to enable people to presence themselves to their own great adventure, their own epic, epic story. And I'm wondering how life might transform for you, for me, for all of us, were we to engage with life as a great adventure you know to stand back you know and have a meta view of our our grand story and where where we are the hero or shiro of that story and um, and the trials and tribulations that we've endured have been part of part of the shaping of that magnificent tale that um, that we live to 
expand our experience and expression? And what if we are life living itself through us? Then we get to have these epic adventures. And, you know, some of us may have have um, adventures that are kind of like um, Indiana Jones sorts of adventures that are really, really big scale and and um, epic by any standard. And others of us may have have quieter and yet equally profound moments in our lives that that don't make quite the same um, adrenaline pumped kind of splash, but still that are maybe deepening into the the presence of our our souls and and um, connecting on a more intimate nature. And Bernadette says, my life is full of finding the wonderful. Oh my gosh, Bernadette, make a t-shirt of that, really. Um, and so um, yeah, life full of finding the wonderful. That, you know, or find the wonderful. It, please, that would be such a wonderful t-shirt to have and wear and and we get to choose that right so um it's it's through contrast that we get to really appreciate the wonderful and and i think that that's uh that's kind of the foundation of my life um is finding the wonder and being filled with that, you know, filled with wonder. When I, you know, sometimes I forget, sometimes I get sucked into the drama or the despair or the negative, but the, the truth is that the wonder is always available to us. So finding the wonderful is is moving into life with a sense of awe and curiosity, and even in the darkest moments. So I had such a privilege yesterday of uh, talking with a potential client who who has um, had a diagnosis of HIV positive, and. It's so amazing to be able to work with, I mean, this person is sort of a shamanic kind of person, you know, considers themselves a wizard really, and was filled with this joy and wonder until the time of this diagnosis, at which point the world kind of came crashing in and there was a whole lot of meaning making around it that was soul sucking. And uh, we had the opportunity to connect and do a session and um, transform this, this experience into something that opens up worlds of possibility. And one of the conversations was, uh, you know, that, that there was such there's such deep heaviness about this diagnosis. And um, part of it was an allegiance to all the other people who have suffered so deeply as a result of, of this diagnosis. And um, what what arose was just because others have suffered doesn't mean that you need to doesn't mean that you need to continue that paradigm of suffering there may be an opportunity to transform that to become your wizard self and to um, embark on this as an adventure not um not to belittle it in any way not to minimize it but to recognize that this is an opportunity to um, to go toe to toe with this was something that was this person's greatest fear throughout their lives. 
and um and i suggested that perhaps it was their greatest fear because they knew it was going to happen and and be a vehicle for their transformation and expression they're stepping beyond their limitations and and that's a terrifying thing for all of us is to be stepping into our greatness and what if this for them is a vehicle for them to become a you know to to become to step into their greatness to be stepping into a transformative role that can impact the lives of so many others you know what if this is part of their epic adventure and they just now are stepping forward into that. Who knows what's going to happen? The truth is we don't know what the outcomes of things are. We project them. We project the outcomes based on the past. We carry the past into the present and forward into the future and Bernadette says, a wizard can always change the outcome and narrative for others to be in awe of the power. And, you know, Bernadette, thank you so much for that. And it was a matter, you know, like this person really had experienced their wizardry and their wizardness up until the diagnosis. And then it kind of all went to just disappeared. And, um, and through our work and conversation, they they transformed the whole experience of it. So Rosalind says, is this the same as having a vision or mission for your life? I think it is, Rosalind. I think it is. And so often the vision or mission of our lives comes through heartbreak. In fact, that's one of the that's one of the um questions one of the guiding questions that i use to support people in identifying their their vision or mission and that is what breaks your heart and um and it could also be of what are you most afraid and so here this person is um facing facing a situation that has so much social baggage to it so much painful history of suffering and on so many levels on so many levels suffering and death even and um and to be facing that and recreating the story to be able to recreate that story, not only for themselves, but for a community, to be able to redefine how to live in the context of such a thing. I mean, that's wizardry, that's power. And it was so interesting because in, in, our, in our session, they had the image of Niagara Falls and they were talking about how much destruction Niagara Falls is capable of and I said well yeah but they harness the power of not Niagara Falls to power cities it powers cities and so you know this was a way for them to deeply connect with the power that was accessible to them to you know power a whole new paradigm and so you know what looks like what looks like tragedy can be um what looks like tragedy can be a profound gift so jenny oh good morning jenny jenny says good morning my daughter breaks my heart feeling rejected and not feeling loved by anyone jenny thank you for being willing to put your heart out here today and to allow us to be extending deep love and appreciation and compassion to you and for you i hope you can receive that and and so your daughter is doing what your daughter does and it's I, you may not want to hear this but it's the way that you're thinking about her 
behavior and your situation together that is breaking your heart. It is the meaning that you're making around what's happening that is breaking your heart. And I'm not saying that it's not devastating. I get it. I get how just unimaginably excruciating the, the loss of relationship can be. And so I'm not, please, please don't hear what I'm saying as minimizing your grief and your despair, because I, I get it, I get it. And at some point, at some point, there is a place where you get to allow your daughter to do what she does and to not make your well-being dependent upon her actions. So I deeply, deeply feel for you. And, and I, I know the pain of loss. So please don't imagine that I'm minimizing that. And yet at some point, there is a place where you can allow her to do what she does and to not have that to break your heart, to not be holding it in your in your worldview in such a way that it is so destructive and devastating to you. There's a new story that's available, and it may be way too soon. It may be way too soon. We need to give other people the opportunity to be who they are and not and not make our well-being reliant on other people's choices and i know that that's a huge step it doesn't mean you love her less you can still love someone and and it's it's i get it's deeply saddening i get it Bernadette says, I don't know where your friend lives, but here in Canada, I know they have a cocktail to assist in all the elements that HIV beauties endure, maybe worth the search. They're on all kinds of medicines. Um, so they're, thank you for that, Bernadette. They're, they're addressing it for sure. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot that's part of that experience. You know, and socially, there's a lot around that experience. And and um, so Bernadette's replying to Jenny, sending hugs and prayers for strength, as am I, Jenny. And, and lots of love and compassion. And, you know, the heartbreak is in wanting things to be different than they are. And I understand that. You know, I understand wanting wanting life to be the way we want it to be. You know, wanting, the, you know, the relationship should be different. But life is what it is. Things are as they are. And there is, there is, I choose, and I'm not saying it's true or not true. But I choose to believe that there's a perfect unfoldment, even when, even when it's excruciating. And sometimes we have to get to the limits of our pain in order to come to a place of reconciliation with life as it is. And so I'm thinking of another client who lost his daughter to cancer. And she was pretty much the love of his life. And he spent years being angry and in despair and, and hurt and just immeasurable pain. And, and now he is in a place where 
he is finding joy and love and commitment to honor her, you know, and to live his life into honoring her. I know it's not the same because your daughter's still here and she's still making the choices that she's making. But I encourage you to dig under where the grief is. And, and maybe there's a deep, so you said feeling rejected and not feeling loved by anyone. And so our deep experience of rejection on some level truly lives in our lack of self-love. And that's a hard, hard thing to recognize, you know, to, to recognize that we get to, we get to accept ourselves. We get to love ourselves to know that we're worthy of love. And um, it's very, it's a, that's a really, really challenging transformation and and I feel for you I deeply do Jenny says the gift is the present moment it's so true Jenny on August 5th I reached my seven-year anniversary of receiving a stem cell transplant of two baby co-ed's blood from Germany that saved my life and I feel she robbed time with my two grandsons and she is accepting a baby girl in December that I learned about from a friend. Nobody in my family wanted to tell me. I confirm my intuition knew and to learn no one family won't share the information was hurtful. This isn't the life I wanted. Oh, you say cord blood, not co-ed blood, cord blood. So, so Jenny, you've been given a new lease on life right? And, and I understand, you know, like, the deepest hurt that I think people can experience comes from family. Because we, we, we have bonds with family that are, that are um, just part of our DNA, literally. And the dynamics in family, I can't tell you how many things I've seen in my own family and in the families of people I work with. It's just devastating. It can be devastating. And so what we can look at is our wounds to learn what our lessons need to be. And so, you know, you're you're talking about how your daughter robbed time. That's a, that's a story, that's a conversation, that's a perspective. And I'm not saying that it's not true, but it's one of many, many perspectives that can be true. And it's a story or it's an interpretation that is creating much deeper pain for you. And there's a place where we do have we do have a choice in how in the interpretation we create for our situations. And um, I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to say, you know what? I love this person dearly and they're on their path and I'm on mine. And it's just, it's as much as I love them, it's just not happening right now. And it may never. And we get to look at the stories we tell ourselves about that. You know, like on some level, there's there's probably 
a story in feeling rejected that you deserve to be rejected. That is an internal belief is my guess. And maybe you get to look at that, like seeing all these times or experiences where you felt rejected, where you felt not enough. I mean, I, I lived with that for years and years and years. In, in, and transforming that, I can tell you it's possible, but it comes from self-acceptance. It comes from allowing, allowing yourself to be who you are without shame or blame. And that's transformative and, and other people may accept you or may not. But the, the deep pain is, is from feeling rejected, feeling not loved. And so we get to give that to ourselves. We get to give ourselves that appreciation and acceptance. And, and regardless of what happens with the other person's behavior, that in itself is transformative, I promise you. And I'm so sorry that you're going through such a painful passage. And you, you do have the ability to transform that into something that ultimately will be enriching to you. Although I'm sure it's very... It may be completely impossible at the moment to see that. So I, I wish you just, I wish you grace and, and um, as much ease as possible. And hi, Sammy from Pakistan. Welcome. It's great to have you here with us. So, um, I'm going to wrap it up for today, and I invite you to look at how these deepest tragedies and deepest pain can be something that enlivens us or, or feeds us toward our, our possibility. Jenny says, I beat leukemia twice. Jenny, it's no accident. Amazing. So the second time with leukemia was at 80% blood cancer. I went through three inductions that failed by the grace of God. The fourth time worked. My daughter was my rock. She was pregnant with my first grandson at the time. It was my inspiration to not give up on life. And Jenny, so she served a beautiful purpose for you. Um, and Jenny says the estrangement is far worse than the leukemia. Well, Jenny, the only thing that I can say to you is hold her close in your heart and and be loving her and uh, feel the love that you have. And, and that can bring you closer to her soul. I, I wish I had an easy answer for you, sweetheart. I'm so sorry for the pain you're going through. And I do need to go. I'm, I just want you to know that there's so much love pouring out toward you. And um, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern each weekday morning. And um, I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network. And until next time, so, so, so much love to you.